Good and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Purple District Council May meeting here in Purple today. Are uh, we live reading? Recording for uh, Thank you very much. Welcome to everybody out there in the in the wide world. Thanks, Gary. Um, Councillor Fletcher. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
us the picture, anything in youth and technology? Um, yeah, just uh, wanted to, oh, sorry, I uh, just wanted to um, support uh, Christine and her acknowledgement of uh, the Temple District Council staff for being super proactive, especially in the Rangatahi space at the moment. Uh, just had a catch up with Peter Boyd yesterday, then a Topo Network Youth um, meeting yesterday, then unfortunately we couldn't attend due to uh, receiving submissions on the uh, annual plan. Uh, but everything seems to be going really well. It's just about uh, the establishment of, I think, what they want to call a kaitiaki group um, and uh, to help steer, I guess, the direction of the Total Youth Network. So really interesting to see what this is going to look like moving forward in terms of youth movements within uh, the Turangi area. Um, also been obviously working closely with the Turangi Nangatahi Hub as a trustee, uh, and they seem to be taking along, along really nicely. I think there's going to be plans around uh, engaging with a uh, youth leadership program, a bit, more, a bit more proactive in that space. So looking forward to seeing what that looks like in the future. But some fun stuff happening with our Rangatahi. Obviously, the goal is to keep it consistent. Thank you, Councillor Fletcher. Good show. Um, age and disability. Kirsty Truman. Um, you just had good feedback and like came all about, um, about the staff coming to uh, support some of our uh, less mobile people with ramps that go onto the um, footpaths. So even though I thought they looked ugly, they're really functional and they're really able to be yeah, well used by people that are um, in some of the um, mobility scooters. So um, yeah, we had really nice comments on our community Facebook page and they're just really happy and just by the, at the um, quick response from council staff. Um, and it looks like we might be getting some extra funding from outside of council um, for full parts as well to also help us um, like you know, people can't access the lake because they're from there and, and similar to what um, the river trails we're talking about uh, for past, not, not the river trails but going up to the cemetery is another one that um, people are keen for so um, but from a basic point of view that's, that's been yeah helped a lot of people access more of the without worrying that they're going to tip out of their um, mobility scooter um, so, yes, thanks for that one. Should I hear about Mangakin or two? Yeah. Should I hear about Mangakin or two? Okay, yes, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, so just in regards to the um, Mangakin school changing um, and getting, uh, yeah, the site changing and getting these classrooms, um, the school hall will be surplus to building requirements. So um, they've approached us to see whether the council is able to take that on as a community hall facility so currently working through what that might look like because we already have a agreement with the Ministry of Education to have the school gym used as a community gym so um, whether that can also be part of the, the parcel to retain that for the community use. Just that we have um, recently just met with the bus stop cafe as well just to thank them for um, the service down there um, at the lakefront. So not only did they provide vibrancy, but they sort of outside of their cafe business did lots of things like um, sort of security, health and safety down at the lake, information centre, all those extra things. So we just um, thanked them and gave them a bunch of flowers on behalf of the council for all those extra things they did for us down there. So, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor. Right, moving along. Councillor John Williamson, Arts and Culture. Thank you, Worship. Uh, nothing to report this month on the particular video profile this month for the compromise, etc. So, still no information. Thank you, John. Environment and Climate Change, Councillor Danny Lachlan. Who won that test? Oh, in your phone. Attended the monthly meetings for Cash Bay Residents Society, uh, Warren Trust, and Waipiki General Community Society. Always interesting feedback from those folks. Cool, thank you. Yeah. And someone is noting the um, Reading Topo Day this weekend. You're supposed to green mm -hmm. and dig things. Um, if you're not sure you're going to make it because it's a long weekend, you can just be like me and give a donation. Is it Friday? Friday. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Danny. And Yvonne. Community Safety, Councillor Kevin Taylor. Thank you, Worship. Just um, 
notes as in the agenda and I'm happy to answer any questions. Working on the CCTV issues. Still working on the CCTV. We had a meeting um, here with council staff and police and uh, town centre Tolpo uh, and addressed the BA5 meeting that evening. Um, suffice to say, there are some examples of excellence around the Bay of Plenty uh, which we can replicate, but we're just working through a process at the moment. Thanks, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Nafai, um, Emergency Management. Um, thank you, Worship. In the Emergency Management space, um, over the last month, I've had a couple of speaking opportunities about emergency management, both Probus, Turangi, and the Power Talk New Zealand Conference. Um, in regards to strategic relationships, um, I attended with the Mayor and our Acting CE a courtesy call with the Chinese Consul to New Zealand and his delegation which was um, was a great fun, actually. And um, I also spoke to a pink ribbon breakfast group, which is a blessing and opening of three Kainga order homes on Scannell Street, Taupo, the King's Coronation tree planting, and I went along thinking I might be rent a crowd for the Mayor's first coffee catch-up at Fine Feet, but he was inundated, so I was very pleased to be able to help Julie and David just um, keep everyone around <coughs> until they have a chance have their own time for the mayor, so been a, a good month. It feels like pre COVID time. Mm -hmm. Great, Thank, thanks very much, Councillor Park. Um, Kylie, um, Councillor Kylie Lennon from thanks. Production and Primary Industries. Thanks, David, uh, just a heads up on Friday, there is um, the Awaken Cafe at a Rifurora doing a fundraiser for Linda Forrest, who's recently been diagnosed with cancer. Most of you will be familiar with Evelyn, um, it's her sister in law. So, the Awaken Cafe are donating um, all of their proceeds from the day towards Linda. So, um, it's a great community initiative for a great community person. So, sorry? Friday? This Friday? This Friday. Yes. Um, just a heads up that on the 1st of July is the Tahonga Matariki Ball. It's becoming an annual event, so if anybody would like to support that, I'm sure they'd love to see you there. Um, the 21st and 22nd of June, the freshwater policy is going to be discussed by the Waikato Regional Council. Um, they will be holding one meeting at Waikato Regional Council offices here in Taupo and the other one at Tatoki Marae. Um, out towards the Rikuroa, um, actually part of the total district boundaries. Um, most of you will have seen the um, downgrade in the farm milk price um, last week, which has left some people with um, <clears throat> costs beyond what that milk, farm gate milk price is, and that concerns me for our district, knowing that for every dollar made in the rural sector, um, it travels eight times around an economy. So um, if that's not going out, um, not the easiest. Um, as you'll be aware, there was a fatality at Iwatahi in my ward, and just want to pass on condolences to those families. Um, as you'll be aware, tomorrow is Gypsy Day, so you may find more traffic on the road, just a heads up to be aware of that. Um, thanks to Anna Park for pointing out to me, Perma Pine is looking for community projects, so another business within our lobby that are looking for things that they can support. So if you have somebody coming your way, that might be a great place to go. Um, and there are a number of ongoing concerns for the rural sector in regards to the Ministry of Education looking to zone all schools within the total community and what impacts that will have on attracting staff for our sector um, within the Rohe. So just a couple of heads up. So from. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Section there. Councillor appreciate it. And uh, yeah, appreciate some of those fatalities on Sunday night. <clears throat> Councillor Campbell, anything you want to add to the words? Oh, yeah, we should, um, just attended a pump track a couple of weeks ago with you, with you Kevin. Um, that was good, a good little do. I think it's a wonderful facility. I've been using myself lately, actually. It's quite, it's, I haven't quite got the groove, but it's really cool. No, no, no um, backflips. So. Mm -hmm. I know, it was, uh, we passed that day on Sunday. Um, it was chocolate. Yeah? Yeah, really good. Very good. Oh, thank you, Councillor. Thank you for all your hard work. Um, 
just um <laughs> Sandra Greenslade. You requested not to speak. Oh, sorry, about that. sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Introducing the Councillor Sandra Greenslade. <laughs> um, I attended the uh, bi-monthly uh, co-governance committee uh, uh, Manifokohana uh, work plan where we were working on the our submission for the annual plan on the 3rd of May. Um, 5th of May, I met with Peter Britton, Chair of Aumori Kurita Ratepayers Association, ongoing discussions and issues with the erosion and lake levels. Uh, but I have to say that the Erosion Committee is working very hard with Toa Pua District Council staff and doing good stuff. Um, on the 11th and 12th of May, I attended the Electricity Trust of New Zealand Conference in Wellington. I am the touring trustee on King Country Trust, and I mentioned that because we had um, anybody who was everybody in the space speaking to us, Ministry of Climate, Minister of Climate Change, Minister Shaw, and Minister of Energy, Megan Woods, and climate change is the word on everybody's lips, along with um, emissions reductions, and of course both of those things affect us quite closely in this district. I'm also on the advisory board for utilities disputes, and I went and saw them while I was in Wellington. Um, I attended the dawn opening of the Tiamata Puna Sports Centre in Tūrangi, and I was um, also attended the official opening of the Tūwhari Toa St John Ambulance Garage. Uh, King Country Trust was a major funder of this. And worship and the Araki were there as well, which was really lovely. It was a beautiful day, wasn't it? Was really lovely. Yeah, it was a great day. Mm -hmm. And the culmination of years of work from that community. I think every single person in, commu in the community has contributed at some point over three years, uh, number of years. Um, the Tongariro representative uh, group met in the Motuapa Fishing and Boating Club, and Councillor uh, Fletcher was elected our mm -hmm. city chair. Um, and there was a Massey University Volcanic Risk Hui here in Chapo Event Centre on the 17th of May. That was very interesting. The uh, Kurita Māori uh, citizens put together a pink ribbon brunch on the Saturday the 20th of May and they raised $3,000 for that. Uh, the Turingi Era Club um, tell me that they entertained a free Korean film crew on the 10th of May um, with the support of our local Kromatua. Uh, and the film is going to appear on Netflix, so I will let everybody know when that comes out. Apparently they were extremely impressed with two readings. Thought it was a great place, as we know. So they enjoyed themselves, and they, apparently they were uh, very admiring of our hospitality, particularly our takeaway shops, apparently. Mm. Yes. <laughs> um, on another rather sad note, um, we're very concerned that the New Zealand Bankers Association who would have liked to have created a banking hub in Turing and cannot find a building to meet their minimum earthquake standard of 67%. So that has been very upsetting to all of us, actually. I'd particularly like to comment on Mike Bowie and his work in the space. I think he's still working hard on it, but it was a little depressing. Um, and last night I attended the uh, Turingi After Five at Bailey's um, along with Councillor Lusterman and we had a very nice evening. So, as usual, just a quiet one. Thank you. I see Turingi features on the ITM and fishing show as well. Did you find that fish within the island Sunday nights? Yes, yeah. no, it must be. I don't actually have to fish on Saturday. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this is the adoption of the annual report that we finished um, when we finished the year nearly 12 months ago now. Um, so I would take the item as read. Um, I'd just like to uh, remind you that we can't make any changes now. So um, happy to answer any questions, but we can't make any changes to the report. Um, and Leon is here to talk about the audit uh, opinion. Thanks, Jen, and good afternoon, Leon. Um, I'm not too sure of the event. Thank you, Worship. I yeah. think I have maybe more than a year ago. Yeah. Because it's a long time since I've been at a council meeting. So if I don't know anybody, I'm Leon Picasso for New Zealand based in Tauranga. You probably can't pick it up from my accent. I'm not a Kiwi born. But uh, yeah, been in New Zealand for about 15 years and across local authorities for 13 years auditing them. Anything to report? No, not really, Your Worship. Um, in the in your pack, there is a paper that I provided to the Audit and Risk or Risk and Assurance Committee meeting um, last uh, earlier this yeah earlier this month, and uh, the audit has been completed late. This is no reflection on your staff or management. It's a reflection on auditor shortages, the continued impact of COVID nineteen had on on the auditor. Uh, uh, auditors across the world and especially audit, not especially including audit New Zealand. So it took us much longer than it should have to complete this audit. Um, and that's why we're only doing this now. Our aim is to complete your 23 audit by 31 October within the statutory deadline. Um, good news is you'll have a new appointed auditor. I'm rotating off. So uh, you'll be under pressure to ensure that I, my promise is kept to you. Thank you, Leon. Uh, yeah, so this is your last uh, report. You've been uh, in my local government career. You've been the one constant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I've always enjoyed your um, uh, your forthright summary of our our situation. Uh, it's always been uh, hopefully pretty good in your eyes. So yeah. appreciate <laughs> it. So your last item. Very sorry. So where will you be going? Uh, we had to reshuffle portfolios because of uh, we've got some new directors in um, and we need to train them up. Yeah. So we decided to give them the better councils like yourselves to get trained up. I'm using honey today, aren't I? <laughs> Excuse me. Still living in Still living in Tauranga, so probably doing, not probably, definitely doing Tauranga City Council, Bay, plenty regional, Western Bay, yeah, a few other. Very good, thank you, Leo. So, Jeanette, thank you uh, for your report. Any questions in your report? Pretty good. Um, Councillor Loughlin. I just note that um, recommendation from the Risk Assurance Committee. We're very happy with the process and um, yeah, just happy to move if there's no questions. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. No questions? Cool. Okay. Moved by Councillor Loughlin, seconded by Councillor Park. Uh, that uh, one, two, and three. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against. Carried. Thank you, Leon. Thank Good you, Richard. You. Thank you, Gus. Five point three. Budget substitution for Atia Murray and Waihaha Water Treatment Plant upgrade from. Indeed. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, today I'd like to request approval to um, transfer one million and fourteen thousand dollars from our Hartipi Drinking Water Standards Project to our RT Murray and Waihaha Water Treatment Plant projects. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background. Take the paper as read, but just a little bit of extra info to help support your decision. Um, initially about Hartipi, so um, as a multi-year project um, to deliver a new membrane water treatment plant. Um, for Hartipi, we've run into some challenges there around land acquisition. Um, and so the current budgeted um, funding in this current year, $1.2 million, is not going to be spent. Um, we are actually making some quite good progress with the Department of Conservation at the moment um, and acquiring um, a concession on some of their land just um, across the state highway from the Hartipi village. Um, but it's still going to be quite a long lead time to actually lock that piece of land in. 
Um, so we're looking to transfer some of that money to these two projects, which are effectively ready to design and construct. Um, so moving on to them, RT Murray and Waihaha, they're part of um, six small water treatment plants that we're, we've been looking to build for some time now. We've completed two. So River Road and Whakamaru are now done. They've both been operational since Christmas. Um, these are the next two cabs off the rank, um, RT Murray and Waihaha, and then we'll be following with Tirohonga and Whareroa, um, which will be requesting some more money in the long-term plan uh, to deliver those. So obviously the sort of probably the main question I think on your, all your minds is um, it's quite a lot of money to move um, and, and why so much? So there's a few reasons, but probably the first, and it is a little bit hard to explain, but the, um, the way we sort of initially looked to deliver these was through, was back in sort of 2020, 2021, around the COVID time, um, we had sort of three waters reform funding from the government. Um, and we initially started designing up all the six sites. Um, we reasonably quickly realized that the time frame on the government money was really challenging. Um, and we weren't gonna be able to deliver six. So we focused on the first two, which were the sort of easiest to get, you know, easiest to deliver. Um, as you know, we've completed those, but because of the time frames with that government money, you had to spend it by a date. Um, we actually sort of continued the design on the other sites. But what that meant is that those first two sites, we couldn't quite deliver with the government money. So we had to actually use some of the money from RT Murray and Waihaha to complete those. So we've sort of used a little bit of that budget already doing that. The other main reason why we sort of need, need, need to transfer this budget is uh, inflation. And I know you've heard us harp on about that for some time, but to put that in context for this um, project, the first two sites we went to competitive tender and um, for building the buildings, mechanical electrical process equipment was about a million dollars. We've just competitively tendered these next two and we're up at $1.75 million. That's the cheapest price um, and the preferred tenderer, to be honest, and it's the same tenderer. So we're looking at a really good solution, but price have, has increased significantly over the last two years. These other two, these next two sites are a little bit more complex from a civil perspective as well. We're on a completely new site at Waihaha, so we've got clearing work, which has been underway. Um, and RT Murray, we've had to build a retaining wall and um, there's some work under high voltage yeah. power lines. So there's just some additional complexity that's added cost. Overall, we're hoping if we can get a decision today that we'll be able to um, have these sites operational in about a year's time. So um, just the final thing probably to stress, which is all through the paper, it's a net zero sort of expenditure change for council. So we are moving already budgeted expenditure between projects. Um, so there's no change on council's budgets overall. Um, and there, there's no expected delay at RTP. OK, we're still looking to target that we just got to get the land first and so as we come into year one of the LTP we'll be putting more money in to then design and construct our team. So happy to take any questions. Thank you very much Tom. Thank you for explaining that. Um, any questions at Tom? Thank Thanks Tom. Thanks for all that you do. Really, really appreciate it. Um, with these projects how do have you got a contingency or how do you build a contingency and or do we expect to have a contingency in this given the actual the environment we're in pricing? Yeah, it's there is contingency, yes, but it's very challenging. And I, I'd say in particular with these sites, it's been particularly challenging to manage the budget with that government money. Um, in particular because we had to spend it by a certain time frame. If we didn't, we'd lose the money. Um, so we sort of we did, you know, we purchased all the UV reactors for all six sites, for instance. We've got those in storage. So that was all paid for by the government. If we hadn't done that, we would have lost some of the money. But look, it's a really challenging space. And I think we'll see that um, through upcoming LTP discussions as well at the moment as to how we actually forecast accurately what our budgets need to be on some of these sites. Councillor Lena. Um, I support what you're doing. Here, I think it's really wise if we can't use the money elsewhere that we are using it, um, especially for our rural communities. Um, just like to point out, um, Tarahong is having lots of issues with their water, so the sooner that they can get going would be fantastic. Thank you. Councillor yeah. Lachlan will support the same um, corridor. I think this is mainly because of delegations that we just haven't done as, as within management. So happy to 
Take on someone wants to move. Cool. Okay. Hey, Tom, just a question of the how to be. So that money which you used us where? So we have to resubmit the long term plan to do how to be again? Yeah. Yes, we will. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. Council is not aware of that. Yep. So it, it was a multi year project. So um, the million dollar well, 1.2, which we had this year, um, there was going to be more funding. And you, you know, in, in the coming year, and I think it was over three years that funding. So effectively, what we've done in the coming year, we've we've put that to zero, and this money we're going to shuffle off, and we've we're left with about 130k, I think, which we'll utilise to um, get the land acquired. Um, but yeah, year one and two probably of the LTP, we'll see the money come back in for HTP. So um, <clears throat> do we deal with anyone in particular with HTP? Uh, yeah, we're working really closely with. Um, uh, that there's two um, incorporations there, both the land the main landowners um, of where all the residential areas and and the one adjacent and and dock and the local hapu. We're sort of we're almost got a steering group going with all of them at the moment. Yeah. Very good, Tom. Thank you, Andrew. I just wanted to add in, in response to Councillor Williamson's question around contingency and how that's managed. There's different types of risks that we want a contingency for. At this point, as Tom mentioned, they've already been tendered. So a lot of the delivery contingency possibly not needed because it's been captured in the lump sum contract. But the further out you go from projects, the harder it is to obviously estimate that. And in terms of hard to be when we come to that, obviously we'll have the knowledge of the previous projects that we've done to inform the right sizing of the budget for these projects, given that they have been tendered uh, and significant amount of the risk has been very good thank you very much gentlemen uh, appreciate that and um been moved by councillor leonard and seconded by councillor lachlan resolution up there that we transfer that money all those in favor please say aye, aye. against gary thank you gentlemen thank you. all right next up we have 5.4 Arts and Culture Action Plan. Stephen Jobs. Good afternoon, Stephen. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor, Councillors. Um, thank you for your time this afternoon. Just here to request uh, your approval to receive the Arts and Culture and Natoy Action Plan uh, following our workshop on the 27th of April. Um, we're bringing this uh, agenda item to you today um, that you receive the action plan and its 37 action points. Uh, my apologies, sorry. And um, so you receive the 37 action points and um, officers will use the LTP process to develop business cases around those. Um, we'll take the item as read and available to answer any questions if there are any today. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. We have a comprehensive workshop. <coughs> we have an A on the delivery of that plan, so uh, well done. Any questions of Steve? Councillor Taylor. More comment. Um, thanks for it, Steve, and I'll read through it and it's comprehensive. I like it. It's a little bit um, a, a different, uh, like the, the sport and rec strategy. What I look forward to now is the actions in there actually being delivered. So we go from strategy and action plan to delivery on the ground. So I really look forward to that. Both and strategy. Yes, yeah, so. I think officers do too. So I mean, our look, our next step upon this being received is working with the consultant, Nicola Harvey, again to go back out to those that have put input into it. And obviously, some of those action points there are actually possibly better delivered by the community. So one of those steps will be working very closely with them in this space. Yep. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, thanks, to Nick. Nicola. Thank you, Councillor Lachlan. Sure, I'm one one. So we're going to revoke. 2004 strategy. So this will sort of, even though it's still being finalised. No, no, this is it. This is a different one. Even though you just can go back. Goodbye. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Lockham. Moved. Oh, move. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Chief of Right Councillor Shepherd. Uh, thank you, Steve. Cool. Appreciate uh, the work you're doing. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against. Aye. Gary. Thank you. Good. Right, carrying on. 5.5. A 
Uh, so the next report is the performance report for April, and I'll oh. perhaps start with the introduction to that, just really acknowledging the front cut. Um, so April was quite busy for the engagement team, I know I've been recognised a couple of times, so comms and engagement um, and through the annual plan and really want to recognise that that's not reducing that document that helps the feedback from the community and thanks to councillors too for their support. Uh, one other thing I did want to recognise while Steve was in the room was really during April was the pool safe accreditation for both uh, the AC bars and the Turangi. And um, that's not an easy process to work through. So just something in terms of what occurred during April, that was a highlight. And finally, even though it wasn't in April, it was just about 1st of May. Uh, very exciting to see the start of the construction for Te Whare Hono or Te Whare Tour, which our uh, council will obviously attend in. So very big milestone for the organisation. Thank you, um, Acting CEO Julie. Um, appreciate uh, mm -hmm. all the comments for your report. And so, Jeanette, we have you again. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. Good afternoon, again, councillors and your worship. Um, I'm just going to touch on the financial summary and then Pranel's going to come up with the uh, projects. Um, I take the item as read, but I just want to explain a few things. Um, I've had a question, uh, some questions from Council of Westerland, so I'll um, answer those in this forum. Um, the expenditure being over budget um, down the bottom, it talks about um, electricity and professional fees and everything being um, higher than planned. So, now, electricity costs are over by $479,000, and uh, we had it. We negotiated a new electricity contract at the beginning of this financial year, and those prices increased obviously substantially. So that is the uh, reason for that. Fuel as well. Um, we're all aware of increased fuel costs, and mm -hmm. I would say we probably didn't anticipate the increase as much as what it was in our planning. Um, so that is over by $300,000. That's not all fuel, that'll be other things as well, um, being slightly over as well, maintenance, etc. Um, professional fees, um, a lot of those are offset by, um, we hire, we, we use professional services to perform some of our tasks and we recover those from people applying for resource consents or building consents. So that recovery appears in the revenue line, but the expense appears in the expenses. Um, the um, unrealised financial losses that are in the TEL fund, those we hold, you might, some of you may recall um, from previous that we hold um, a level of sh equities, share equities in the TEL fund, and those have not yet, some have recovered, but not all have recovered yet from um, the last three years. And so that's what those unrealised losses are. Um, and the final point there about the cyclone, we're still incurring costs to do with Cyclone Gabriel and currently sitting at about um, 360000 um, And the personnel costs, um, just to reiterate that we are still looking at that and um, the transitional funding from government for the three waters, again, that money comes in as a revenue line and grants, and then there's a cost in the cost line, so we don't offset them. So that's why we see high cost and high revenue as opposed to. Um, um, in terms of the rest of the report, um, our treasury function is um, tracking okay, and there were no items um, approved over the <laughs> CEO's, well, not the CEO's delegation reporting, there were no items to report this month. So happy to take any questions. Thank you, Councillor Leonard. Um, just when you talk about the valuation within that TEL fund around the shares, how long do we run it that they haven't recovered before we revalue them? Is there a time frame that's appropriate? We revalue them every month. Revalue them. Yeah, every so that's month. why the, the, you'll notice the losses number goes up and down because we're revaluing them every month. Okay. I'm them to market. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Actually, while we're talking about operating costs, do you mind if I ask Julie? I noticed we've got some external contractors in our parks and reserves at the moment. Is that because of staff shortages or? Uh, 
I'm going to look at Andrew at the same time. Operational, we, sorry. I'm, uh, I'm we definitely sure. have suffered from obviously a um, intense work period for parks and reserves and because of the weather this year, we've been quite behind because of the impact of Cyclone Gabrielle. So the team um, were a number of weeks behind in their normal program and we're looking for some contract to help to actually catch up. Um, as I'm not sure if Andrew has further to end, but there were certainly a number of reasons why we looked to get some additional support to try and catch up. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's that's an accurate summary. We are the other thing I'll add to that is we are we are doing a review of how we service that particular activity, yeah. and it might end up being more of contractors in the future and less staff. Vice versa, that's yet to be determined. But to answer the question about this period, yes, we could have to both augment current staff levels and provide higher levels. So it's it's a presume they're operating a negotiated Sorry? price. A negotiated price. Well, competitively yeah. uh, tested and then negotiated. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, sorry, Janine, have you finished? Yes. Any other questions? I've got Neil from the Strategic Projects, Mr. Neil. Good afternoon. How to I'll see you, Thank you. Good to see you. Leo, how are you? Hello, everyone. Very well. How are you? Good. Ko te tu kia kia kua pai to ataki turangi. I hope you had a wonderful morning in Turangi. It's great to be here again to discuss our significant projects. Thank you for having us both. Um, obviously, it's been a month since we last talked about our top 17. We are near the end of the financial year, so we're seeing some kind of a race to the finish for a couple of our projects, although we do have a number of multi-year projects, which I'll be talking to you a little bit more about next month as we lead into the annual plan financial year. Um, I guess there's only two significant traffic light changes to report. And under Three Waters Reform, we have a budget going from red to orange, and that's really to reflect, I guess, the transition funding that Jeanette was just mentioning, but also the longer time frame now with that kind of two-year extension. Um, there's a few more questions to be asked of central government, um, but at this stage it's in amber. And also, why or a house? The budget's now green, reflecting the annual plan budget amount. Um, and just a note, remember to keep your eyes open for the invite uh, in August for Wyora House as that goes live. Now, continuing with our new process of introducing you to directly to some of our wonderful project managers. You'll recall last month, Elijah May came to talk to you about View Road land disposal. <laughs> Today, I'm joined by Linda Stewart, who's manager asset information. She also runs the SCADA update um, upgrade project, which originated back in the Three Waters stimulus era, which Tom Swindale just talked about when we had um, $8.32 million come through from central government to stimulate jobs over that COVID timeframe. Um, so the drinking water standards UV upgrades was part of that and SCADA project kicked off around about the same time. Um, now, Sk Linda's gonna take a couple of moments to provide a few more, a few more details on SCADA and I've updated it because as you'll know, acronyms are just wonderful, aren't they? Um, but it's, a, it's actually a really important internal project. Um, so I'll introduce Linda to provide a little bit more information. Sure, thank you. Can you hear me? I've got a quiet voice so you can hear me. Thank you all. Um, nice to be here. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It is the heartbeat that manages our multiple treatment plants, water, wastewater, pump stations, reservoirs, and it, it allows our operators to stay in one place and look at screens to know whether the sites are working according to the way they should, whether anything is going wrong. It allows us to capture data to prove that we are compliant with the requirements of government. And the data also allows our <coughs> asset managers to do some planning and, and checking sites and throughputs and so forth. So SCADA, when we talk about it as a system, it, it sort of is and it sort of isn't. It, it's, it's a piece of software that holds the business rules as to how each plant, each pump station, each piece of equipment in those plants and pump stations 
must work to their optimum requirements. If they are outside of the set parameters, then alarms are raised, which are sent to our operators to go and check, sort out something, go and see what's wrong with the plant. This can only work, a piece of software is just an inert piece of software. It can only work within the SCADA environment with the correct electrical wiring, because we are actually looking at how electrical mechanical pieces of equipment are working. With, with, we've got um, instruments in the field, sniffing and testing whether we've got the right amount of chlorine in the water, whether we've got the, too much turbidity in the water, whether we're within or outside of, of requirements. That information has to get come from the piece of equipment that's wired to the brains on site, which is the um, PLC. It's a, it's a controller, so it's like a computer on site. And then that piece of information has to come back to our central SCADA system so that information can be sent to the operators. The alarm systems can be raised. We have an alarm system that hooks into this. The only way we get that information back is through a very complex network environment. And I have to say that the Taupo district, with its, hang on, I'll tell you, 18 water treatment plants, 11 wastewater treatment plants, two major LDSs, one separate facility, 27 water pump stations, 26 reservoirs and growing, 65 wastewater pump stations monitored and 66 step stations monitored. And we are continuing to put into the reticulation um, assets like flow meters that are now being hooked up to the SCADA system so that we are monitoring how they're working and the water that goes through this. This network environment has to be one of the most challenging. I've been in IT and system design my whole career. This is one of the most challenging I have ever seen. It is challenging because we have limited public communication. We have problems with Spark um, in certain areas because our treatment plants, as you all know, are all around the lake. Trying to get sometimes the signals back properly is difficult. So that's a, a challenge and that's the environment that we're in. Why are we changing? Because the world has changed. Five years ago, nobody really cared about cyber security, really. And the um, water, the drinking water standards whilst being published, uh, the emphasis wasn't on them. The world has changed. The emphasis is, is strongly on cyber security. The emphasis is strongly on compliance with the uh, drinking water standards. And that compliance relies on us having data. And if we do not have all of our data, then we cannot prove compliance. If we can't prove compliance, we're non-compliant. Thank you. Anil. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you very much. Now I know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just sit there and do I work with some brilliant people. That's what I work with. <laughs> it's a very challenging job. Oh, Andrew. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to say that in support of the team that are delivering what's one of the most technically complex projects in council at the moment. It's the one project that I sponsor because no one else understood what it was about. So I just wanted to help out, help the team out, and, and support the project. We've got fantastic technically skilled people delivering via the team interested really invite you to go and have a look at one of our sites and see how these control systems interact with each other and deliver the tools to our operators do their job and deliver the work thank you uh, councillor campbell i was just going to ask a question so there's challenges are there are there, are there ready solutions 
Um, yes, and that's a qualified yes. So we are extremely fortunate here in Taupo to have one of the best network engineers I've ever worked with. Um, this, we have a combination of radio, 4G, um, we have tiny, tiny little bits of fiber within our sites, but yes, it is fixable and we're currently working. <clears throat> it's, it's challenging, but it is fixable, but we do have some problems in some of our remote sites where we need to, to communicate from water treatment plants sitting on the lake edge to reservoir sitting up on a hill. And that's a local thing within 14. Uh, oh, we're having to put radios in there. So we, do, we have spent money on new radios, new modems, and, and so forth. One, the old Vodafone have committed to coverage across New Zealand, linking with Starlink. Does that have relevance, like you mentioned, Spark? Um, is it time? We, uh, that's your detail, but I'm um, just hearing that there are other options. Yeah, there are, and then maybe right now that's not there. So, Spark, <coughs> there is nobody that can give us perfect coverage in this district. So, Starlink, yes, it's it's a real option. It, it has to have a backup because if you have a really overcast day or it's raining, you, your, your communications are spotty. So it would be a backup. So we'd have to have dual mechanisms. Starlink is not cheap. It's around about $150 a month per, per site. So it's, it's one of those things where you have to take a step backwards and look at that pros and cons. And, um, and again, you know, we're spending money, we're spending ratepayers money. Do you want to go and put Starlink in 18 water treatment plants? It's, it starts to add to your monthly costs. So yes, it is something we are looking at. It is something that we might need to do for about four of our water treatment plants. The ones that are really, really difficult, how many? Um, but maybe four. Very good. Thanks for that. Thank you for your time today. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, ladies. I appreciate thank you for your time. Your report. Um, any further questions? Any further questions? Let's see. I can see you. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you once again, dear, and your team uh, <coughs> for the work you're doing. Right. Do we have a mover, please? Thank you, Councillor Shepherd, Councillor Fletcher, seconded. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Carry. Right. 5.6. 5.6 Waikato Triennial Agreement. Mr. Andrew Wilson. Good afternoon, Andrew. Kia ora, Your Worship. Kia ora, Councillors. Um, so today we're here to uh, adopt the Waikato Triennial Agreement. For this triennium, um, I'll take the item as red, but uh, just to be very clear, this agreement has come to us past the statutory deadline. Um, there are no legal ramifications of adopting this agreement outside of the statutory deadline, but that's something that we just need to make sure is there in the record. Um, other than that, I'm happy to take any questions. Um, I'll note in the report that there were a few minor changes um, made to the Waikato agreement since last triennium. And those agreements particularly pertain to uh, decorum and, and actions in the mayoral forum around basically having agendas and things set up uh, before those those mayoral forums happen in the Waikato region. Thank you. Okay, Andrew, thank you. Any questions? Um, I'm happy to move straight forward. Thank you, moved by Councillor Rothman, seconded by Councillor Park. Thank you, Andrew, once again. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carry. Right, some amendment to standing orders, 5.7. Cheney, James, governance, quality manager. Just 
to your worship. Um, this item enables you to amend your standing orders. It's a minor amendment, um, just to make it clear that Clause 15, um, the application of restrictions uh, pertaining to the public forum, would apply to any situation in which a member of the public is addressing you. It's currently implicit in the standing orders, but this would enable you to disagree. Thank you, Shane. Any questions, Shane? Standing orders. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, and my apologies for not raising this beforehand. Um, the second to last, the last bullet point. Um, should that be or or and on the on the actual on fifteen point two of the actual attachment? You got the matter is subject to legal proceedings and the matter is subject to a hearing, so on and so on. Should that be or the matter is subject to? I'm really looking at Nigel here as well. And or. And or. Yeah. I just said or. <laughs> yeah. I mean, covering all. Or, I know it's pedantic, but if you get challenged, um, my preference would be we change that not just in this, but in every other part of the standing orders where this is on. You see the one I've got there? Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Shani. No other questions, Shani? No, cool. Appreciate that. Uh, there's a resolution there uh, with the amended um, suggestion from the Deputy Mayor. Can I have a move, please? I'll oh, do that. Yeah, no problem at all. Thank you, Moved by Councillor Taylor. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. Right, moving on through. What have we got next? 5.8. Oh, we've got to do that. Council engagement there. Yep. Karen, uh, Karen, is Karen here? No. Okay, okay Shane, are you happy to do that? Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah. Um, the, the list of engagements is correct with just two engagements to add in on Tuesday, the 27th of June, being a morning tea for Tidy Total volunteers at 10.30. And then a catch up with Waikato Regional Councillor Mike Dowland from 11 until noon that day. Um, as part of this item, um, you can consider um, attendance at conferences and approving um, council payment for that. Um, we've had a request from Councillor Fletcher to attend the local government New Zealand conference taking place in Christchurch on the 26th of July. Um, so if you would like to add that in, uh, you, can, you can do that and then join the group. Excellent. Councillor Park. Um, I'm happy to uh, move that amended resolution, which um, allows Councillor Fletcher to attend the local government New Zealand conference. Can I just ask Councillor, do you want to attend part of it? Or... Oh, no, the no, no, whole thing, sorry. The whole thing, sorry. Okay. Okay. Very good. Any other Councillor Okay, so that's been moved. And second, because we don't mind adding those new words in there, uh, Shane. Thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. It's against. Carry. Okay, we'll go to 5.9. Uh, I'll call it 5.9. Um, now, yeah, which is the uh, late item that can be accepted. Uh, Karen. Good afternoon, Karen. How are you? I don't want to the... know if it's late. No, that's right. So it's the grant of the easement uh, to Unison. Uh, over the local purpose reserve in Seven Oaks in Kinloch. Good afternoon, Karen. Good afternoon, Nice Roger. to see you. <laughs> um, so, yes, my paper, um, pretty straightforward. Uh, we've done this exercise before, but this time we're in Kinloch, the Seven Oaks development. Um, there's a local purpose reserve for wastewater and stormwater that is to vest in council, and there's a wastewater pumping station on that reserve that needs to be supplied. With electricity, Unison is supplying that electricity, granting the easement for that purpose, and the purpose of the reserve is exactly for the purpose of the wastewater. No issue. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Any questions of Karen? Councillor yeah, Leonard. Um, rather than a question, just a thank you. The can do. Let's do it. Get a moving. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> no other questions again. No, no problems doing any late jobs now. We can do it. We are movers. We are movers. We are doers. <laughs> cool. 
Moved by Councillor Leonard, I believe, and seconded by Councillor Lachlan. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Karen. Thanks, Karen. Okay, so that's the public part of the uh, meeting uh, closed. If I could have a move it to go into confidence. Thank you, Councillor Stephen. Seconded by Councillor Rankin. 